Before today's episode, I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations, and recognise their continued connection to the beautiful land and sea. I'd also like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging, and I extend this acknowledgement to the traditional owners of the land my listeners are on. Welcome to Ritual the Podcast, your cottage in the woods, a sacred space for the witches, the healers, the magical folk to meet and speak of wisdom, witchery and old world magic, where people come to learn, to hear stories, to share secrets and to be free to be their true selves. Welcome to Ritual. So today is very exciting because it is oh, it's going to be a surprise. What? I was going to say I'm sitting here with a very handsome man and his name is Patrick Harvey and he is my husband. I am. <laughs> um, now we are going to... Are married. We are married. We are going to be talking about the next turn of the wheel, mm-hmm. which is... Mabin. Mabin. Uh, I thought it would be nice to have Paddy with me today because he has been on this journey with me mm-hmm. pretty much from the very beginning and he celebrates every Sabbath and turn of the wheel with me. And I thought, you know what, rather than do this by myself, it would be good to have him here to like riff off and... Just riff. Wax just lyrical. Chat. Just, just chat. Just ch- chat. Chew, chew the chat. <laughs> Um, so before we start, do you want to like talk about yourself? Now he, he is a Leo and he is an actor. So when I say talk about yourself, I mean in just short paragraphs. I am a Leo and I'm <laughs> an actor. <laughs> um, um, no, I am married to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, happily. Thank you. Uh, uh, no, I am. I'm so I'm, I'm, I mean, I've been together for 12 years now. 12 yeah. and a half. Mm-hmm. Happily. Um, and yes, been an actor since I was nine years old and uh, have been a director since I was about 20 and a writer. So um, run a, a um, creative agency, um, do some voiceover work. and <laughs> um, He actually does. You wouldn't even know that he, <laughs> if you're listening to him because he does it in an Australian accent. Australian accent. And he's very good. It's actually quite a hard accent to do. I went, fun fact, I went to a drama school in New York. New York. A very in prestigious drama school, by the way. And one of the classes was dialects and they were teaching people how to do an Aussie accent. And obviously I was the guinea pig and people were so bad at it. And it made me realize, ow. Ah. Oh, sorry. sorry, the rabbit. The rabbit is attacking us. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. <laughs> it made me realize... Um, how hard our accent is. <laughs> that's that's the rabbit. That's the rabbit. If you're watching this, is Archie. Okay. Um, but anyway, sorry. So anyway. That's Patty. Oh, am I done? Okay. Oh, no, you can keep going. Uh, no, I'm done. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Leo and I like windy walks. Um, yeah. And maybe later I'll do some... I'll do the commercials for this podcast. Yeah, you should. Yeah. That'd be good. Now streaming on Spotify and iTunes. Nice. Thank mm. you. A little bit, little bit uh, retail-y. He's for handy to have sometimes. S- such a, hmm, for such a spiritual um, uh, podcast. We'll need to work on it. We'll, we'll workshop it. It'll be a little bit more whispered. Mm. <clears throat> so, should we begin? We shall. No, we should. We should. Mabin. Now, Mabin is one of the eight sabbats celebrated in the witch's wheel of the year can you name all eight <clears throat> go sarwan lunasa beltian ostara mm-hmm. letha mm-hmm. yule mabin did i say lunasa no yes you did think of bridget ostara in bulk in bulk Sorry. Yeah, that was good though. Thank you. You did well. Um, now, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, mm-hmm. Mabin is celebrated on the 20th to the 23rd of March. Um, so if you're up in the North, you'll be going into Astara at the moment. So happy Astara if you are listening from the North. Um, 
Now, Mabin. The North always just signs like, what news? For <laughs> yeah. Like, well, everyone's everyone's very I cold. think of just Vikings. Yeah. Like everyone in the Northern Hemisphere is a Viking yeah. to me. We've sent the princess up north for yeah. her protection. Um, now, Mabin is the second harvest festival. The first one being Lunasa. Lunasa. Um, I did know that. I just made it look like I didn't. What I love about this so is that so Lunasa is, can also be called Lama, so you may mm. have heard it that way before, but it is the first harvest festival and what they would, back in the day, but even this day, what they would generally harvest at that time is wheat and corn. Mm-hmm. So that's why during um, Lunasa, people would make bread. Um, and the dollies. Corn dollies. Corn dollies. Yep. You can make corn dollies at Mabin, but I think mostly they make them at Lunasa. Um, but <clears throat> Mabin is known as the fruit festival because during this time, they people would harvest apples, mm-hmm. berries, um, a lot of like root vegetables, pumpkins, a lot of those kinds of things. And I love, what I love about that is that it just really connects you into the cycle that happens outside our windows right now. Yeah, autumn. Be- uh, it's aut- because if it's- you go, if you, if you went to like a fruit farm now, it's apple season. Yeah. And, you know, way back in a few months ago, you would see the farms cut, like, harvesting all the wheat. And I love that the Sabbaths, like for me, that was how I started my witchcraft journey was by following the wheel of the year because it really just like sinks you in to what is happening in nature around you. And I think that that's like, it really also connects you to what witchcraft originally was back mm-hmm. in the day, how people live. They had to live with the seasons because if they didn't, they they would die. You know, they really had yeah. to listen to what was coming and what was happening at that moment. They had to harvest their food, yeah. know that they were going into winter and they couldn't just go to the supermarket. Go to the supermarket and buy stuff. So, so you had it to, was, there was a lot of thought that went into it and yeah. forethought coming into winter, stock up, coming into summer. And even things like even this, how you would treat your house. You didn't have an air conditioner. Mm-hmm. You didn't have central heating. No. So, you know, you would, <clears throat> you know, with spring cleaning, you get all the all the, the dirt and the dust and everything from winter out. And you open up the, the, the blinds and the shutters and clean everything yeah. out, freshen it up. The breeze comes in. And then <clears throat> coming in the winter, you know, it might be, and I'm talking way, way back, you know, you've got obviously fires and whatnot but then you might have um skins animal skins up against the windows and sort of like drapes to like block in out uh, the wind and the cold and it, it just th- your whole life revolved around seasons yeah and you think even like the term spring cleaning like back in the day maybe not so much down in the south because it doesn't snow as much but a lot of people would literally be stuck in their homes for months because it would be way too cold to go outside. Yeah. And so you think of spring cleaning of like finally opening up all the windows and yeah. you can clean out. Cause imagine how like stinky the house would be, yeah. how like, you know, it, just like it would need a clean. So yeah. that like thought of spring cleaning is like literally opening the house up to the world. And that's, I mean, even if you look at that now, you think about, you know, a lot of the scents that they sell, spring garden, spring um, scent and things like that, because it's just that idea of freshness Mm, and and new new life and Mm. um, like revitalizing, refreshing. Yeah. Mm, So I love that following these Sabbaths really does connect you into nature, especially for those people who are drawn to like green witchery or... um, and things yeah, like that. it's very, very important to have that connection with nature. And I think that that is one way that kind of encourages you to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Mabin is also known as the witch's Thanksgiving, similar to in America, how they have Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. obviously different meanings. Um, but what I love about Mabin is that it gives you an opportunity to show what you're grateful for. So obviously back in the day when people grew their own food, they would show gratitude for the harvest that they were able to create to feed their family, to get through the winter. Mm. Um, So obviously you can still do that now. Like if you are a big gardener, you can, you know, be grateful that the sun has come, it's grown all the flowers in your garden. Maybe you've got an apple tree filled with apples, you know, all those things you can be grateful for. Mm. But it's also 
um, I guess, metaphorical seeds that you've planted? Like what were the goals that you had that you set for spring, spring and summer? summer? What has flourished? What has like grown? Mm. And what can you also, you know, change? Like what what didn't work so well? What needs to either be replanted or what needs to go completely? Like what really just doesn't benefit you? It's like mm. a really big time of <clears> reflection <throat> for both things that worked and things that didn't work so that going into winter, you're more prepared. Um, you have a better idea of what you want. And so when that spring season comes again, you're better equipped, I yeah. guess. And I love that Mabin is that kind of, you know, it's a, a stepping stone for gratitude. It makes you extremely mindful. And I think mm. sometimes we forget to do that. Sometimes we are so focused on the next thing, the next step we have to take that we actually forget what we've already achieved. And I think yeah. having a reminder to stop <clears throat> and look at, at what you've done is so important. Having that sort of mindfulness. Mm. And when you think back, um, and I keep going back and think, thinking about the origins of it, I mean, and this is just me purely uneducated about whether or not this is true, but it's a pretty, I think, pretty decent speculation that if you've got people going into winter where like summer spring you're you're doing things right you're out you're growing you're you know being outside all the time if you're in a really cold super cold climate winter you couldn't really do much right you have to just sort of get through and survive mm -hmm. and it's really reflective so it is that time to sort of go geez when we get back out i'm gonna be doing this i'm gonna be doing that and that's your sort of time to reflect goal set but i think you're right the lead up to it the autumn element of it is that kind of like, geez, that was good. Yeah. Did really well. There was some really awesome things happening. Blah, 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 blah. All right, now we got to prep for winter, moving into winter, mm -hmm. harvest, move into winter, and then it's back to, right, okay, what's for next year? Or, the, you know, the next mm -hmm. sort of awakening <coughs> of uh, of nature. And I'm thinking, like I say, fairly cold, cold climates yeah. in, in, in winter. But that's it, just my take on it anyway. I think it's also, it's similar to Lunasa where it's also enjoying what you've grown because you do have this harvest mm. that's ready to be eaten or, you know, whatever your harvest may be, you need to use it. You need to appreciate it and you <clears> need <throat> to enjoy the fact that you did that. You mm. grew it. So, you know, so a lot of people don't take that time to appreciate what they've done. And I think, you know, people might find that, um, what is what's the word, a bit like self-absorbed where it's like, you can't just sit and like congratulate yourself. Like it's a bit up yourself where it's so important to go. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. I, I think, did yeah, that. There's you know, definitely I, a difference. I don't know if that's like, I think it's a very Australian culture thing as well, where people aren't really encouraged to support themselves and to congratulate themselves. It's like, you kind of just have to get on it with it and do it. But I think acknowledging what you've done, not only does it like, grow your confidence mm. and your self-love but it validates what you're doing it for you yeah, like absolutely there's so there's so many people have doubt and i and i guarantee you you know there's been times when i've sort of thought oh what am i doing and then you kind of look back and you go i've actually done quite a lot perhaps mm. i'm just a wee bit tired and i know that there's a lot of you know there's a lot of people who sort of go i ah, just, you know, just do this do that go to work blah blah, blah. And then whenever they actually do, like you say, spend a bit of time thinking, you go, geez, I, I we did, really did cram a lot in. Mm. I've done a lot. You're allowed to be proud <clears> of yourself. And of course you're allowed to be proud of yourself because it boosts your confidence and it gives you that sort of nice wee um, shot of like, you know, serotonin where you go, yeah, yeah. I geez, that's that. good. And I, you know what? You're allowed to feel proud of yourself mm. because tell you what, there's a lot in life that's going to beat you, beat, yeah. beat you down, you know, even just turning on the news. So, mm -hmm. you know, having those nice wee, you know, bursts of like, yeah. And self-love and self-appreciation is super so important. important. It's not overindulgent unless you're going, yeah, well, I'm sorry that you had that, but I did X and I did Y and but I'm using it in that way. It's a you're wee not bit, showing off. But you know, it's a wee bit sometimes mean. Sometimes you're allowed to show off. But having that sense of like, I'm actually really proud of myself. Yeah. That sort of, um, it's, it, a good it's thing. understated. Mm. It's not, it's not like, you know, you're not boasting. You're just sort of saying, I'm appreciating the effort that you've put in. Yeah. Um, people who have, 
<clears throat> run a marathon or uh, you know done a triathlon or running a business or you know have a baby <clears throat> have a baby or have a project at home that they've worked on for months mm-hmm. and months and then they go did everyone see the table I made yeah you know and, and like yeah. something like that like you can be part you of that, and that without people going geez he's really cocky about that yeah <laughs> do you know what I mean so rude it's like well have you done it yeah you know I know um, now Madden <clears throat> falls on the autumn equinox um, so that is similar to you think of the summer and winter solstice, whereas those ones celebrate the longest day of the year and the shortest being summer and winter. The thing I like about the equinoxes, which is autumn and spring, is that they bring a quality. So basically the day and the night are now equal. There isn't a you know, the the nights don't drag on, the days don't drag on, everything is in balance. Mm. And I love that because balance is such, especially to me, I find I often, I often lack balance in my life and I, things always seem kind of out of place. The rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit is. Sorry to interrupt. Um, what was I saying? Balance is important because often things seem out of place. Things seem out of place. And I think, again, Mabin, it really reminds you to find that balance in your life. Mm -hmm. And I also love that the north, again, the north of the world and the south, they meet together because now we, we share the sun and now we share the moon. Whereas before... You know, one of us would be in summer, one of us would be in winter, and things were off kilter. Where now everybody is together, there's a unity, mm, and I think nice. now, especially in the world, unity is such an important thing because there's yeah. really a lack of it. And I think using this time to call in balance and to call in in unity, especially from a magical point of view, if you're looking for something. Um, to call in for this Mabin or even spring equinox, if you're listening um, from up north, bringing in balance would mm. be a really beautiful thing to call in. Um, because I know me personally, I even have it like written on my vision board balance because I often find myself burning out either mentally or because, you know, I've been like too. Ab- oh, sorry, the rabbit the bit rabbit. me again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been so absorbed in running my business and all of a sudden I find that my creative passion is running low in fuel mm. or I feel sick. You know, I, I the physical signs come through where I start getting like ulcers in my mouth. There's always a really big one to say, my body going, hey, you're, you're not down. looking after me. And I think yeah. really taking that time to go, what am I really feeling on the inside like check in like am i feeling stressed and overwhelmed am i feeling really tired all the time Mm. does my body feel weird am i exercising enough like having that like little internal checklist of your life going through going right i know what i need to work on and it goes back to what we were talking about before of the seeds that you've grown but also yourself like Mm. what do i need to work on going into winter Because usually winter is one of the harder times of the year. It's darker, it's colder, you're more isolated, you you don't socialize as much, you go very internal. Mm. And so sometimes people can get a bit down during this time. And so if you've gone into winter with a stronger um, mind and body and a stronger, I guess, tool, a tool belt, And a checklist of, I know what I need to work on. I know what's going to make me feel better. You're going to come out of it in a lot, in a, in a better position than when you started. It's a big reminder for me to do that because I don't. No, you don't. I'll just (laughs) ignore things. And I'm guilty of it. I get Mm. caught up in work and, you know, working late. And then getting up early and then and then working late and then getting up early. And then if it's a Friday, stay up late for me because I'm like, yeah, I need this time for me. When yeah. really my body's probably going, I, I know you want to spend some time by yourself, but you probably should go mm. to bed. And then I'll do it again on a Saturday night and stay up. And, you know, if you go to bed early because you go to bed quite early. I do early, like to go to bed early. But I'll sit up and 
watch watch a film or something like that and then which is good because that's that fills up your cup like that's how it you, does but it doesn't well, and that's yeah, the thing i'm talking about, about balance, balance which i don't not have. staying up till two in the morning i'm extreme till 11 i'm yeah well i'm extremes and yeah. i always have been and that's something that i um really need to work on that's something that i really mm. need to work on and as a as a as a man in his what let's just say late mid to late 30s <laughs> um i i probably you know it's, it's about time that i <laughs> sort of recognize that because um i mean i look at me i look pretty tired no you don't i think you know what i always think of um how life shows you that something's up and i have this analogy where it's like at first life will throw you a feather hmm. and people might look at the feather and go um whatever it's not just a hiccup it's yeah. just a, a little thing it, i can ignore it and just move on and then life goes i don't think that you're really paying attention so i'm gonna throw a brick at you and the brick hurts it does hurt gives you a bit of a shock it gives you a shock a and you go mm, you have two choices usually at this point. You go, that hurt, and I don't want a brick thrown at me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change what I'm doing because obviously this path is leading to somewhere that I don't want to go. Or you go, oh, it was just a brick. It hurt. Whatever. I'm gonna keep going, and then life goes. All right, you're obviously not going to listen to me, so I'm going to throw a truck at you. And a truck is a life-changing thing. Yeah. This is usually when people end up in a doctor's office or yeah. a hospital yeah. because they've burnt out, their body has gone, not, not doing this anymore. They end up with a therapist because they have a breakdown. They, it, You're scaring me. I'm not saying it's going to happen to you. I'm just saying that it's so important to find balance because life will show you yeah. that you can't go on forever like that. Eventually, yeah. something's going to have to stop. If there's an extreme of something, it's never sustainable. No, it's not. And it so has, that's, as you say, it has to be balanced. It has to be balanced. So I think using Mabin to call in balance and to search for your version of balance is a really important thing lesson i'm gonna do that you should do that now here's a little story for you yeah the rabbit is he's quite annoying he is very he's, he's doing a wee bit of scratch Ar his name is archer archer yes that's right and he is adorable but he is extremely annoying <laughs> <laughs> we is. love him and you know what he's so lucky he's cute because i can't even begin to tell you the thoughts I'm not even going to go Especially there. if I have been working oh late and then I have to chase him around the house for 10 minutes because he knows I'm going to put him into bed and he runs and he hides and I'm running around, going, come here, come here. Ugh. Um, And you he, eventually get him then he scratches the shit out of yeah. your hands. and He ate all my candles. He did. I made all these candles um, for my business and I went to pack them up and he had jumped on the table and eaten them all. Yeah, he ate the herbs. Yeah. So, I remake. didn't obviously send them out to you. Good practice. I, I, yeah. Good practice for making more. Sure. So, story time. Story time. Story time. So, Mabin mm -hmm. is actually named after the Celtic sun god, Mabin Apomodron. Hmm. Mm. I didn't know about this. Mm -hmm. um, I had heard vaguely about him um but i wanted to kind of deep dive in because i know there's another one astara is also named after a goddess um but i wasn't mm -hmm. too sure about mabin and what he represents um and i don't think he is a character i guess you would call him that you hear much about yeah um so this is the story of mabin okay i'm gonna close my eyes and picture okay so we begin back in the Celtic land. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so the story begins with his mother, Modron. Mm -hmm. Now, she gave birth to her son. Mm -hmm. And then three days later, he was stolen from her. Now, I will just pause here for a moment and say that in this story, there is a lot that is very vague. Um, so I think you kind of had to just roll with it. The first being that we don't know who stole him. We don't know why 
but all we know is that he was stolen. Okay. He was locked in a tower. Uh huh. And that's where he lived. So in my mind, he's like, I think of him as the male Rapunzel. Right. Without the hair or Mother Gothel and the singing and all of that. <laughs> I mean, he did might he, sing. Did he not sing? He could sing. And he didn't have long, luscious golden I wasn't. Golden well, hair. maybe he did. Maybe I'm making a judgment. And oh. I could be proven wrong. But oh. as far as I'm aware, there was no magical hair and no Mother Gothel. Was he bald? <laughs> maybe. Okay. So, so Mabin, maybe Mother Gothel. So maybe maybe like Mother Gothel we bald kidnapped babies. Mabin for whatever reason and locked him in a tower. So this is the thing. And, and I'm not trying to... I want to hear the story, but I'm mm-hmm. just... He keeps chewing on cords. Um, <laughs> is that you go... Okay, I'm gonna steal a baby, and then just lock it in the tower. Yeah. Why? What's the point? What's in the tower? I have no idea. Is it is the baby gonna work in there? Are we milling wheat? What are we doing <laughs> in the tower? Also, why did I shave his head <laughs> when I could have used his long luscious locks to, to get forever. back up the tower? Anyway. And he keeps singing these damn songs, you know. Flower theme oh, is beautiful song. Um, a lovely voice. Thank you. So anyway, while he was in this tower, he trained himself mm-hmm. to be this like badass warrior. Mm-hmm. He, I don't know how he knew, again, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> um, but he... <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to get through this. Okay. <laughs> but he, yeah, he taught himself to be this like amazing warrior who could really fight battles and kick ass if needed. But not get out of a tower. But not get out of a tower. <laughs> I didn't think about that. He couldn't um, overpower an old frail woman. No. No. Okay. So, again, so he was locked in the tower. He, he grew tower. up. He grew up. He's trained, a badass. He's a badass warrior. Yeah. And word had spread throughout the land that there was this guy trapped in a tower who was like a super soldier. Yeah. Like Captain America. Jason Bourne. Tower. Jason Bourne. All the, yeah. all the soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> um. And so there, we'll leave him for a second. Okay. And we go over to a man. His name, now I will apologize if I get these names wrong. They are Celtic and they are very difficult to read, but I'll, I'm going to go with it. This man's name is Keshlock. And he was cursed so that he was only allowed to marry this one woman called Olwen. And if he didn't marry her... He would die. He was cursed by Olwen's father. Now, I'm going to get you to say this name because I can't. I think it's Ispathorden. Ispathorden. And he was like a a giant chieftain. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming he's like the dude out of Game of Thrones who squished the guy's face. Um, The mountain. The mountain. Thor Thor Bjornsson. That one. That's, that's who I picture. Someone who a you uni- go, I don't want to mess with you because you will squish my brain. Like the da out of um, Brave. Yeah, he was Bill, nice though. Billy Connolly. Oh, yeah, well, I know, I know, I know. This but. guy doesn't sound very nice. And so basically he gets him cursed so that, yes, he can only marry his daughter. He can't marry anyone else or he will die. It's a bit bizarre. Um, I don't know why. He did this. Again, there's no backstory, but that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in doing this, though, he set 39 near impossible challenges um, that Keshlock would have to complete in order to marry her. So he's kind of in... Does this, he want like, him to marry her or not? <laughs> well, this is the thing. <laughs> What's the story? He's kind of in a lose-lose situation. It's like, if you don't marry my daughter, you're going to die. But if, you, if you're going to marry her, you have to do these challenges where... You'll probably die. I'm I'm very sorry, but why 39? Why not like just set up I don't know. the Ninja Warrior obstacle course and you go, that's actually pretty good. I don't know. Away you he go. was determined. I'll show you the reception. That's just what he did. So, uh, But I, I, I just, okay. He went to the trouble going, hey, I'm like, God, this guy cursed to marry my daughter and no yeah. one else. Now, we're going to make it a wee bit interesting here. If you want to do it, you're going to have to complete these yeah. tasks. But also... What's wrong with his daughter that people he has to curse someone to marry her? She's high maintenance. <laughs> Clearly, look at her dad. <laughs> he said there, 
I had to do it to marry your mother. And I've been yeah. unhappy for years. <laughs> and so you must you suffer as well. He's going to go do the same. Um, so Keshlock's kind of a bit like, <laughs> well, I'm going to need some help. So he calls his cousin, who is King Arthur, right. to come in. Okay. And he brings all his men. And they sit and they go, right, you know what? I've heard of this guy. He lives in a tower. Bald dude. He lives could in a be bald tower. or have long hair. But Related he lives in a tower. Born. And he is meant to be this amazing warrior. And I reckon he could help us to complete these challenges. Right. And they go, well, we really don't have any other option here. So let's go and find him. So they all set off and they go, we well, have no idea where he is. Um, <laughs> So they left, so and <laughs> after about two days of tracking, somebody went, so was it left or, or right here? And they go, was- I was just following you. <laughs> it wasn't a good start. And they went, hold on a minute. I think what we need to do is we need to find the oldest animals because they are said to have all the wisdom of the world. Right. And I reckon they'll be able to help us. So they set off, and they first come across a blackbird. Hmm. And they're like, excuse me, we're looking for this guy. He's locked in the tower. Where is he? And the blackbird's like, look, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but I reckon if you talk to the stag, he should be able to help you out. Mm-hmm. So off they go, searching, searching, searching. They come across the stag and they say, excuse me, we're looking for this guy in a tower. Do you know where he is? And the stag's like, no, nah, no idea. But I think you should ask the owl. He's He seems quite wise. Mm. Um Go, go and ask him. He'll be able to help you. Maybe that's where the sand came from. It, it could be. So they go and find this wise owl and they say, hello, we are looking for the guy in the tower. Do you know where he is? Mm-hmm. And the owl says, no, I have absolutely no idea. But I think I heard something from the salmon. You should go and talk to him. So they go into the river and they find the salmon. And they say, hi, we're looking for a guy in a tower. Have you seen him? And he goes, you know what? I was swimming the other day and I swam past his tower and I could hear this guy yelling. And I was like, that's a bit weird. What, what's he yelling about? And I reckon that could be him. And so they went to this tower. They fought off whoever was holding him in there. Mother that Gothel. this great warrior could have I just love this salmon just going, <laughs> all right, lads. Um, it was weird. I was, uh, I was swimming. I heard this guy. Yeah, I, I reckon he's over there. And, <laughs> and what they do to pay him off? Nothing. Just give him a wee bit of... Fish feed. Fish, fish flakes. <laughs> yeah. And so anyway, they free him. They find Mabin. They go, we need your help. And he goes, well, I'm really grateful that you got me out of this tower that I couldn't get myself out of. That's right. So I'll help you. And so he goes and he completes all 39 challenges like that. Keshlock marries Olwen and those two live happily ever after. And then Mabin. And what, what comes of Mabin? Not much. Like there's no mention of him again. So I assume he's... Like, in my mind now, he's kind of just like a wanderer, like yeah. Aragon out of Lord of the Rings. Or what's his name in Vikings? Um, the, the one that they thought was Odin. Remember? Ah. Uh, the man that would go from town to town. I don't sleeping know. with all the women. Yeah. Some, um, I, I assume he's something like that. Yeah. Um, But he's free. So I guess it did end well for him. But that's Mabin. That's a really and interesting. And so they've named uh, Mabin after him. Wow, mm. he must. There must be something else there that he's done to warrant being, to warrant having a, a. Well, I guess you look a at Sabbat named after him. I'm sure there is a deeper meaning. There has to be. There always is. I mean, 39 challenges is pretty steep, and you know who knows what. I'm sure it wasn't a Sudoku puzzle. I'm sure it was like, you know, fight a bird. <laughs> yeah, find that salmon. <laughs> Get him to shut up. He keeps telling people. Yeah information that he shouldn't <laughs> find the the wisest animals and destroy them and they're like oh but what well, it was the sa- we it, was, it was sammy salmon <laughs> it wasn't even me i didn't even know anything um but yeah so there you go that's the story of mabin now i do have some alternative versions of mabin mm-hmm. um that people who uh follow other traditions other paths other paths 
how they usually celebrate because if you look at it, because it is the autumn equinox, it is often celebrated with very similar themes, but they're given a different name. Yes. You know, it's like same, same, but different. Like Samhain. Like Halloween. Samhain, Halloween, Yule, Christmas, all of that. Um, so the first one is there's actually a Christian holiday. Um, it's a Catholic holiday called Michaelmas, which was coincidentally at the same time as Mabin. Uh-huh. Now, if you look back in history, when Christianity began to take over and they were trying to flush out the pagans of the world. Convert. Or yeah. con- it well, depends well, on which depends way you, on look, which at way you it. look at it. Yeah, no. They say convert, but then it's flush. There was, um, a, there was also some driving involved, apparently. With the snakes? With some dri- dri- That's a different... We, we can talk about St. Patrick's Day next week. I know. I know. Um, but um, what was I saying? Michael Mass. Michael Mass. So what they would do is they would go, we need to convert the pagans and they celebrate this holiday. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own. Um, we're going to call it something different. It's going to have similar themes, but it's more Christian. Hmm. And that way we can lure them over to join us because, you know, we're very similar, but we're better. It's or another thing, organized religion. Yeah. Like, you know, one one god versus many gods and mm. goddesses and things like that. The and god. We spoke about mm. Bridget before. Um, you know, Bridget, uh, the go- goddess Bridget is, um, you know, really it's a fertility in women. And I assume men. Um, but she's definitely a, a, a goddess f- for the female <laughs> of the species. And um, St. Bridget in the Bible uh, was I think a midwife at the birth of Jesus, mm. and so they've obviously just sort of drawn that relation and gone, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but it, it relates to this story. You see, fertility, Bridget, and also midwife, and it then it's like it's easy, you know, you didn't have Google to go, oh, hold on a minute, I'll just verify that information. No, you're taking these people in their robes and their you know, you know, wonderful garb who were going around spreading Christianity, uh, and 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 the Bible. And they're like, oh, that actually, oh, okay, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. And, you know, you would kind of bring them over. Mm. Um, because if you're not following these paths, you're going to end up in hell. And, and you know, it, 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 there's there's so much to it. And obviously there's some bits that I'm sort of, you know, you kind of speculate on. But you, you look at it and it's kind of, it's kind of, that's the rabbit. It kind <laughs> of, um, that's just kind of the way it, it worked. Yeah. You know, they would convert uh, sometimes by force. So you, Patty, grew up Catholic. Yeah. Um, have you heard of Michael Mass before? I, I I feel like I've heard Michael Mass before, but I didn't know what it was. No. Uh, I don't know if it was a huge sort of thing. You it know, would be around in Ireland. It would be when when's their autumn? Like September. Uh, yeah, it would be so our when our star is. So in so, uh, September October. Did you do you remember having to celebrate? It's usually they they do it to celebrate the Archangel Michael. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I do remember something around Michael, but I don't, like I say, it's not don't something that really day. stands out. Mm. And there's, there's so many days. It's like, oh, it's St. Francis Xavier Day. Yeah. And you go, oh. There's a lot. You know, um, I think if they threw more public holidays for those sorts of things, there'd be more Catholics. <laughs> Probably. You know I mean? like so Australia. if you're a Catholic, you're allowed St. Francis of Assisi Day off. Like, oh, I might, uh, I might do that as well. <laughs> yeah. Any new saints <laughs> around my birthday? <laughs> um, so that's the Christian version. Now, there is one um, that the Druids would do mm. around the autumn equinox that I actually think is really beautiful. Um, they call it Alban Elfid, uh, which means the light of water. Oh, um, nice. Now, again, druids are very connected with nature and the cycles of nature, and they would use this time to observe the darkness taking over the light because we we are going into shorter days and the the dark, you know, it starts earlier mm. in the day. So they would really honor that time. Um, and they would also use this time to honor the mother, which is their concept of feminine divine. And they would thank her for her harvest and all the abundance that she brought. Nice. And I think that's, it's such a beautiful, peaceful way of looking at it. Just mm. taking that time to observe 
the change around you and and rather than looking at oh no it's winter it's gonna be cold and dark it's yeah. going there's beauty in the darkness there's beauty in yeah. going you know quieter and more internal and and i love what does it that. have to offer what does it have to offer us yeah it's, it's kind of like um and we've said it so many times um whenever things have gone wrong and 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 you know uh, that sort of why 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 is this happening to me although if you change it you say why is this happening for me yeah and look at it from a different perspective so like you say instead of going ah oh, no winter's coming ah oh, no i have to do all this ah oh, it's gonna be cold and dreary and dark that you can go you know what i actually might use this time to yeah. chill and like reflect and you know look forward to things like snuggly mm. soups i mean obviously if you're living in a stone cottage on a thatched roof in the middle of a field oh, i love that it, i know <laughs> be pretty good uh, uh, as long as that a good One wi-fi day. signal um <laughs> and heating but um, <laughs> centrally <laughs> beep, beep, beep. but but to be able to look at something from a different perspective a more positive and appreciate it like i mean we saw it the other day just that oh, we've got this giant pine tree out the back garden yeah and it felt as though the, w- the, the weather arrived. it just it just happened mm. and then that day there was a big breeze and all these pine needles just came down and it was like it was, it was, like snow. It was raining yeah it was so cool and it was lovely and you just go i mean there's a party that goes shit i have to go and clean all them up when <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're blocking the gutters but but you, you look at them and you go that's really it's beautiful the, you know the that's wheel really is nice. turning and um and i'll do it again this year i i built a little stone circle uh out in the garden and I have one of those billy stands. I, I went and did a um, a, Blacksmith. uh, a blacksmithing course that Amy got me and made a bit, wee billy stand. And I took the kids out last year mm. and put a teapot over the fire and boiled up and made a cup of chai together. And So cute. I love that. There is that thing of, oh, it's pretty cold and dreary outside. I'll just stay in. Or sit at the back and I brought a, brought a Bluetooth speaker and we sat out and had bickies and tea mm. and it was just so lovely like and and i think and they loved it as well they were so chilled yeah yeah they loved it it's just great and and i think that's that's the thing you can utilize what you've got even if you think oh that's not oh, it's getting a bit darker at night time mm. oh, great get up earlier and appreciate the mornings yeah or or you know go out and watch the dawn watch watch the dusk earlier because obviously a summer sunset's different than a winter sunset yeah as well um, and I'm not saying I get up every morning at the, you know five o'clock and you go don't. whoa, <laughs> but it's 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 just that you have options. It, yeah, and if you're feeling that like you know the the blues, the seasonal depression, flip kind it of thing, round and flip it round and, and even go. just find one thing. It's a rabbit. Do you hear that? It's a rabbit again. He is. If in doubt, it was the rabbit. Okay. <laughs> He is. So now, the Norse <laughs> pagans, they also had a tradition at the autumn equinox, and they call it the winter finding. And here, they would make a sacrifice. Now, I'm not sure exactly what kind of sacrifice that is. If you've seen Vikings, you know it can come in many forms. It's a pack of vegetarian sausages. Could be, could be the sausages. It could be a goat. It could be a human. I'm not sure. But they make know. a sacrifice. They lay down ale and bread for Odin, nice. uh, which is the North Norse Allfather, their main god that mm. they would um, commune with, I guess. And then they would have this great feast. And this is what I love about the Vikings is that they were very social mm. and they they had these you know big halls and they would all sit together they would have a great big feast together there was no real hierarchy about it everyone sat together they would all pass a horn around where they would each take turns to take a vow of whatever they you know i guess they want to do throughout the winter Mm. um or they would honor an ancestor and I mm. think you think whenever I think of Vikings, you know, you do think of um, violence. You think yes. of you know, raiding that, and yeah. raping and pillaging and burning down villages. But they have such a sense of they're very spiritual beings, and mm. I think I love that they are able to sit down and do this beautiful act together. Um, and it's such a positive, beautiful, you well, know, ritual. Well, let's be fair. There was plenty of cultures back then that raped and murdered they and weren't, none of took them over good. and burnt down villages. No. I, I think, obviously, you know, 
That was a way of life back then. That's how you got things done. Well, (laughs) well, (laughs) I love you. Come on, not a day to day, but Um, I mean, as no, but I just feel like I just feel like you know, obviously, you're you're delivered this sort of. propaganda of oh these guys are barbarians mm. they're they're so and, and i'm talking about whenever you know you listen to who you get these accounts from because nothing really was sort of written down these stories are coming from the people that were conquered by them um and you look at england mainly in the british isles and you think oh they're barbarians they come over here with their axes and chop things and blah, blah. and you're like mm, you guys kind of did the same to a lot same, of same other countries different. You just did it with a posher accent, yeah, and better clothes. Mm. So I, I definitely agree with what what you're saying, but I think that there is there is a, there's so much beauty and calm and stillness in in what they did because they would they would be like you imagine Norway, mm. you know, and sitting I out in the forest in and the trees when they're you know um, going to uh, these um, big carvings of Odin and whatnot and sort of um praying and, and there's just that nice i mean yes there is the, the blood and they they used a lot of blood didn't they animals and, yeah they did and things like that but i mean the mayans and the incas used to do that they everyone to, kind of did it didn't they to the sun gods and all that kind of stuff oh we'll we'll kill a few virgins well it's and, all about making sacrifices for sure gain, you know give and take cross check everything i've said today i may be wrong it's all I know learning, a lot of it? stuff. <laughs> I know a lot of stuff. We've seen Vikings. It's fine. Well, I've That's seen based on fact, right? I've seen that Mel Gibson <laughs> film um, about the Incas. I forget the name of it. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, now there is a, a Celtic tradition <clears throat> called the Feast of Avalon. Um, now Avalon, for those that aren't aware, is a lost land. So think of like Lemuria, Atlantis, Mm. um, way, way, way back. And they say that Avalon was filled with the most magical beings you could Mm. think of. So like lots of fairies. Um, King Arthur was where, that's where he originated from. The Lady of the Lake, Merlin. Love it. Um, And basically, long story short is, and this may be hard to believe, but humans basically started to ruin it because anything that they didn't know or couldn't understand was evil. And the only way they could understand it was by killing it. Mm. Very unlike humans. I, I don't know how they could have been so like that back in the day. But what they did is they Avalon disappeared. They basically say they moved to a new realm where humans can no longer go which mm. is sad um but they do say that and i think i should have checked this but i think there may be a place it's either in ireland or scotland where if you go to this hill i think it might be called like the tour or something i should have checked but if you go there you can hear music playing and they say wow. that that is where the gateway to avalon is and where the realm is the thinnest and so you can hear like flutes and singing and all and music be playing um because that's where they are but Wouldn't we just can't get there anymore oh my god i would love frequency? that yeah they're on a different frequency Wouldn't and we just can't be get amazing there. so they can come to us but we can't go to them i think was i think i might have heard lucy cavendish talk about this on a podcast maybe i'll give her a call later i love her but <laughs> but she, I'm pretty sure it was her, and she said that she went there and she could hear it. Wow! And I would love that. Um, but anyway, that's very short version. That is what Avalon is, and so the Avalon actually translates to apple, and oh. apple is connected with Mabin because that's when we harvest it. So they there is this big, um, like I guess, festival or celebration surrounding the harvest of apples. And so yeah. people would get together. They would, you know, get gather all the apples. They would give the first apple picked back to the earth as a their sacrifice, I guess, and yeah. also their thanks of, um, you know, showing what has grown and what they have been given. And then they would just make all the amazing apple things. Strudels. Lots of pies. Pies. Cider. Yeah, cider. Apple juice. Apple juice, all the things. And that's, um, yeah, they would celebrate apples and the world of Avalon, which is kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Mm. 
So with Mabin, um, if you want to celebrate it at home, um, I thought I would read off some of the correspondences, which is basically the the things that are connected with Mabin that you can use um, in your own home. So the first being, how would you decorate your altar? Um, so you can do things like autumn leaves, which will be in abundance all around you. I know where we are in the hills, in I would say maybe a week or two, there'll be leaves everywhere. Everything just turns... Autumn in, in the hills in the Dandenongs in mm. Melbourne is next level. Yeah. It's Everything's so beautiful. Brown and yellow and red and... There's this one road in particular, actually, when you drive down, it's like I went down one day and there was fog everywhere. But mm. in, in the sky, all you could see was this like fluoro orange mm. of these trees hanging through the mist and these bright orange leaves. And I was just like, what is this place? We did a few laps of that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. So autumn leaves, acorns, which my kids will be very excited about. Apples, sunflowers, my favorite flower. Pumpkins, dried flowers, and candles could be some things. I can't find candles anywhere. I do know of, of one one business in particular that does some amazing candles. I'll link them. Please just check the show notes. Uh, <laughs> Insert ad. <laughs> um, for all your candle needs, we can sage dot go. Uh, well, so for crystals that you can use, um, there's carnelian. Um, we were actually gifted a carnelian once um, by our crystal lady Victoria. Mm-hmm. And this was actually at the very beginning of when the whole pandemic stuff started. And she gave um, she gave us a carnelian each. And she said to us that carnelians were actually used during the plague. And people would hold ah. a carnelian on them. And it was said to repel disease and help keep you safe and healthy. Um and I guess that makes sense is why you would have one on you during autumn because yeah. you're going into the seasons where people do tend to get more sick. Mm. Um, you're trying to say Victoria knew? Well, yeah, it had started. So that's why she oh, gave okay. it to us. Oh, It's all right. I just thought she... <laughs> She's a psychic. She's a psychic. No, it was She's literally the, the news was on. Like. Ah, okay. Yeah. No, well, she, <laughs> nonetheless, she is very smart, very good for women. Um, I was like, geez, she knows things. She does know things, though. Guys, there's a pandemic coming. Have one of these. <laughs> what? You'll, you'll know what I mean in a couple of months. Um, tiger's Eye is another one. Love Tiger's Eye. That is really good for personal power, again, to help you, give you that strength to get through winter. <coughs> Amber Clear Quartz. Clear Quartz can be used whenever you want, Pretty I'd say. Much Basically, is a... I can do everything, Crystal. There must be one sitting around here. There is one right behind this box. Um, citrine, good for abundance and manifesting. Amethyst and lapis lazuli. Oh, lapis. Fun get, fact. You lapis, have to pay extra for a lapis lazuli. <laughs> <laughs> lapis lazuli. Any blue crystal is good for communication. However, lapis lazuli and I are not friends. And there are some crystals that just don't sit well with you. Like I have a friend who has one crystal that makes her want to throw up. I, I've never had that, but that's what happens to her. But lapis lazuli, I had it. <laughs> what? <laughs> the name? Lapis bloody lazuli. lapis lazuli. She is at it again. It's like a, a Harry Potter spell. Lapis lazuli. Should I go get the wand? Later. Okay. Um, I had a bracelet on. I think I had just bought it and I was wearing it. And I was doing, I think I was doing like a witchy class at the time. And my sass levels were like next next level like more than usual like i can be sassy i'm not overly opinionated like i guess in general to people i don't really know Mm. but i was that day i had something to say about everything and i was a little bit crazy yeah right and i didn't know why like my mouth would just like verbal diarrhea out and i'd be going oh shit i probably shouldn't have i need to shut up Mm. i need i'm Mm. annoying myself and then I took it off and I stopped. And I'm like, well, I guess you and I are never going to be friends. And I, I can't do this because I'm annoying. 
Today I'm annoying and I need so to stop. If you have a friend you want to confront about something, check s- on a lapis lazuli. Slap on some <laughs> some some lapis lazuli and get in there and have a chat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my god. What's wrong with you today? You are so full on. It's the lapis lazuli. I just slapped on some lapis lazuli. <laughs> Sorry, love. It's the lapis lazuli. Um. Anyway, <laughs> colors: red, brown, yellow, gold, dark green, orange. Makes Basically, you look outside. The color of the leaves. Yeah. What food? The most important part. What food can you have at Mabin? It's all about the pies. Apple pie. Apple pie. Um, <laughs> Apple strudel. Berry pie. D- Meat pie. The, the pies. Chicken pie. Just all the pies. Bread. Uh-huh. Corn. Mm-hmm. Root vegetables. Pumpkin. Pumpkins. Beetroot. Potatoes. Zucchini. All the things. Yeah, zucchini. Yeah, zucchini. Yeah, zucchini. No. Yeah. Z- it, zucchini, is that a root? Because it grows up like a cucumber. All right. What's the next <laughs> <laughs> What's the next one? Apple desserts again. The apple, apple pies. pies. Apple strudel. We're very. We love a good apple pie. Appleness. Cider. Oof. Baked goods, which I'm all about. And one for you, Patty. Wine. Do you like a wine? <laughs> Not gonna lie. Um. Do you like a wine? Moving uh, on. The herbs and incense that are good to burn this time. Cinnamon, Beautiful. one of my favorites. Really good to bring in abundance and magic and good luck and all the good things. Um, myrrh, <coughs> excuse me, frankincense, sage, star anise, cloves, vanilla, and apples. Apples are a good one to burn. Apples is yum. You have an incense with apple in it. Yeah, my Mabin one I made. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> No, but I just remember burning it yeah. around Mabin time. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Welcome, Patty. Oh <laughs> They're all making sense what? to you now. It's just, oh my God, it's woke up. <laughs> What's been going on? Uh, now, what activities can you do to celebrate Mabin? The Apple third. bobbing. <laughs> Apples. <laughs> Apple picking. Apple peeling. Uh, the first one is my favorite baking and you know what i actually find myself as soon as autumn starts i just have this urge to bake Mm. it could be anything could be cookies bread cake pies whatever i just love baking and i find i feel like you have more of an excuse to bake and eat all the good things because it's colder You, you are a very gifted baker do you know that you. you do know that i tell you a lot but Amy is, um, so we have the, Amy makes these cupcakes from the Humminbird Bakery in London. So she got the cookbook mm. and made these cupcakes. And every time you have them at the par- at a party or something like that, people eat them and go, oh my God, what, what is this thing? And like, it'll dissolve in your mouth and it's just incredible. And and I'm not just, I'm, I'm honestly not just saying this. Um, uh, when, when we went to London... Uh, a few couple of years ago had the kids with us and we went to that the hummingbird cafe yeah. the, the bakery yeah. and we went in and Amy goes oh my god the cupcakes and we ate them and she went what do you think and I said they're they're really good and she went what do you mean and I went yours are better and she went ah shut up and I'm like I'm actually le- like legitimately they are they are better thank you um I don't know I don't know what it is. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just a gift. Mm. It's just a gift. Have. It's just you. <coughs> so there's also, it means you make more. I know. Right. I know, and then I eat it. Get in there. Go on. Um, so we've got baking, walking through leaves, mm-hmm. one of the best things you can do as a child or adult, I think. Going into a park and just throwing the leaves around. We did that uh, last year. Yeah. And it was hilarious. We we went to a, <clears throat> one of the ar- ar- arbitorum. Mm. I think let's go with that pronunciation. Sure. Uh, and there were leaves everywhere, and uh, obviously had the kids with us because we, we bring them out. Um, <laughs> Just with, basic parenting. We bring rules them out with you us need to bring when your we leave with the you. house. And um, <laughs> we ended up having this like leaf fight. <clears throat> so we were throwing, and obviously Poppy started grabbing like the bits with mud on it and throwing it at you. And you're like, okay, that's enough. But 
when we were in the middle of it, it was just hilarious. And there was families kind of walking past, and you could see some of the kids kind of going, "I want to do that." And we we were trying to like encourage other people to do it because it was just fun. It was very fun. It was very fun. No one threw a stick though at my head, and I. There's always a point where it changes, (laughs) isn't there? There you go. All right, leaf fight's over. It's done. It's now a stick fight. (laughs) We're done. Yeah, it's not all Um, picture perfect. Like when you're getting hit in the head with a stick. Um. Then there's cleaning and clearing and decorating of your home, which I think is an important one to remember because you are obviously going to be spending a lot more time at home. So it's really Mm. nice to take the time to give your house some love because your house does a lot for you. Mm. You know, it's your sacred space. It's where you go to feel safe. It protects you from the elements. It, you know, it's somewhere Mm. for you to sleep. And I think it's important to show your respect for your home and also create a place that you're happy to come home to every day because it feels nice to be in. Mm. You've taken the time to make it look nice, to have like a cozy corner. Mm. You know, you can go out, you can buy books that you want to read during the winter because it's cold and you want to cuddle up and just read. Um, I think there's a beauty in taking that time for your home. It's like, you know, when you've got a messy bedroom, you don't sleep well. And you wake up in the morning and you kind of go, oh. Mm. And you get out of there pretty quick. Mm. But when you've cleaned it, you wake up in the morning and you go, gosh, I'm, the day is full of possibilities because you just feel different. It's like when you have fresh sheets oh, and you yeah. sleep and you go, I had the best sleep ever last night because... Love a fresh sheet. Yeah. It just it just does something to you where it like mm. shifts that energy and it, it lifts it up to a new level and Mm. you just feel good being there Mm. so i think now is a good time to take that time to look after your home i think when you get into fresh sheets and you do that thing where you move your legs really fast oh it's so good and you go yes you You can't tell me what are the only people that do oh it's so nice kick 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 really fast oh it's good especially those lemon sheets the linen and the flannel. Yeah, the flannel. If you have a flannel, the flannel flat sheet. Yeah. Fitted sheet. Fitted sheet. Oh. And then and then linen on top. It's oh, the... it's crispy and soft. That's <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, oh, I can't want to go to bed. Another now. one, my favorite activity is reading, filling your brain with magic or stories or something that you've always wanted to learn about, particularly if it's like stuff that you want to do in the spring so maybe Mm. it's like learning more about the garden or cooking or whatever you use that time now to learn about it so when it's you know when it hits that spring time you can go you've Mm. got the knowledge you've got everything you need and you can just dive right in so using the the colder times the darker times to fill your brain and to keep it moving Mm -hmm. is a a good tip Drinking warm, yummy teas and coffee. Delicious. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, divination is a good one. Oh, you yeah. know, we're getting closer to Sarwen. The veil is thinning, which means that communication with um, those that have passed is stronger, but also your intuition uh, will also start to really like deepen. And I think, you know, doing things like tarot reading, oracle cards, mm. runes, tea leaf reading, all mm. of that. It's a, re- it's not only is it fun, especially if you're just um, beginning, it's a cool tool to practice and use this time to learn more about it. Um, you're really do readings good for stuff. yourself. You're very good it's that. fun. I really like it. Mm. And the more you do it, the, you know, the more you can open yourself up to messages and whatever. Um, so divination is a good one. Here's one for you. Um, can Canning and pickling and drying herbs. Love a pickle. And, Love a pickle. And <laughs> I mentioned it the other day about our neighbor years ago who was Mauritian from Mauritius. And her Mary. name was Mary. Mary the Mauritian. And <laughs> she, uh, she would always get me to, she'd like either phone me or like, Patrick. I'm like, hello. And she goes, I am. Help me with these bags of soil or can't work my TV or something <laughs> yeah. like that. And I'd go in and help her. I remember that one time I went over at about five o'clock and her and I were just knocking yeah. back red wine. I we think had a, I was working, wasn't She was in her came. 80s. I just oh. go over there and just sat there and just drank red wine. She said, what are you doing? I'm like, getting pissy over <laughs> Mary's Mary. house. Um, 
but she whenever i do a whenever i complete one of the tasks <laughs> um she dropped she was a cook and she was an amazing cook mm, she was and she'd drop over these jars of pickled carrot and i want to say cabbage and stuff like that and you could put it on sandwiches and and in salads and it was mm. bloody incredible um really really good stuff and mm. you know pickled um uh, onions pickled uh cucumbers like dill cucumbers with the <laughs> oh because you never liked them and then... i never liked pickles but it wasn't because i didn't like them it's because i told myself i didn't like them mm. which a little fact about me i do a lot yeah Amy's... i will often tell myself i don't like that and patty will go have you had it go, nah, no i just no. don't want it i just don't like it As you, you know when you go to <laughs> you know whenever you're at dinner with someone you go oh this is this is, <laughs> this is really yummy do you want to have a go uh and th- someone goes oh no and you go i just have a wee try and then they go all right and have a wee try that doesn't happen in my no. life there then turns into like go have it no i don't, I don't <laughs> want it no do it. just a wee try the i just, I just you, don't want it the uh, more you tell me to do something the more i go no i don't want to and the more you tell me the more i definitely will never ever but you'll it. really like it mm. nah That's and fine. then and then it's just like it was like me trying but to get anyway, you to the watch story D- was. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah. Because um, then it got to the point where you were like, I just don't want to watch the film. Now. And I'm like, it's the best film ever made. Well, this is the thing. You kept telling me it was, and then I did watch it. And I... Now, this I, might divide people. I had a discussion But I this. didn't think it was that good. It's the best film ever. And I had a discussion it's about not. this the other day. I feel as though you needed to have watched it when it was released in order to still be a massive fan of it now. And you are you just missed out. You well, missed out that's on something life. I'll have to live with, you... and I'm sure I'll get past it. Oh, I don't think. So. Anyway, back to the pickles. I told myself I didn't like them, and then Patty said I would, and then I think I was pregnant at the time with Poppy, mm. and I now love pickles, pickles and cheese. Love pickles, pickles in a sandwich. Love pickles. Pickles and mayo and dill in a chicken burger. Mm, my gold. Oh my gold. So yeah. Okay. Anyway, now is a good time to pickle things. <laughs> Do that. Um, now the last one. Can you actually pass me that Mabin book over there? I forgot to get it. I'm so sorry. But I found this. It's called a seed prayer. And basically, <coughs> you get a bulb. Because um, now it would usually be the time where you would get a bulb, like a tulip, daffodil or something, and that you plant it during winter. Now, this is out of the Mabin book by Llewellyn. These books are amazing if mm. you haven't read them. Filled with information about all the sabbats. But this is Mabin. Um, and so you get your bulb, you plant it in the ground and you say this seed prayer, which goes like this. I sow the seeds into the earth. I send love. I send yearning. It fills, it swells, it reaches upward toward the warmth until the time comes to burst from the soil, then dance the dance of life. And I think that is such a beautiful thing a beautiful, um, what's the word, like experience mm. that you can do at home just by yourself with your kids, with your mm-hmm. family. And it's really just like almost saying like, yes, we're going into the dark, but we will burst out mm. and see the sun once more. And it's kind of like a seed of hope for the future. And I think I like what it. a beautiful exercise to do together. I love it. Yeah. Nice work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are we going to do for Mabin? We're obviously going to bake an apple, apple pie. pie. Uh, drink some wine. Yes. Eat some cider. We should do a fire outside. Oh, we, we usually do. Yeah, we do. We've got a big fire pit, mm. uh, uh, like a big sort of iron fire pit and mm. go out and I've got the deck chairs, got a little mini camping chairs for the kids and yep. then we can sit out there. That's so cozy mm. and warm. Um, and cook something over Make the some fire. Make yummy food. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's good about the I'd say I'd get some books, but I have like maybe 400 books that I have to read and Me I too. need help. And I don't... Um, but yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I think that's mainly what we do. I think Mabin's can be a, a nice time to just chill in your home and do all yeah. the cozy things. So that's probably what we'll do. Definitely, and we we're always out walking around in the forest anyway, mm. or go or going you know, going around here, around to the parks and the trees and all that kind of stuff. So we're kind mm-hmm. of um we're kind of really really lucky in that way 
that we get to be Connect able to do that nature. yeah and just mm-hmm. be around it all the time which is great yeah um so the kind of uh i think the biggest thing that would probably be is to go out light the fire because obviously summer don't really light open fires outside up here um no. uh, just because of the danger of bushfires and fires catching um but uh it's definitely whenever it gets a wee bit ooh snuggly and cold so cozy um, yeah we can light nice fires yeah. and, and snuggle outside which is so good so yeah, yeah i might do another uh homebrew as well oh yeah you did that last year didn't yeah, you yeah it was delish it Have was like an good english eel um so yeah do that mm-hmm. ooh yum cozy cozy but yeah, that's Mabin. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, this is the first podcast. This is the first podcast. Not, is it the first one? Well, this is the first one we're recording. Yeah. But I, you will probably be hearing another one from me where I talk about myself and who I am. So we're talking to you from the, the future. Um, the past. Future. The future. Hold on. <laughs> Either way, it's scary. We probably <laughs> so many things are happening. It's terrifying, everyone. <laughs> um, but well done. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Patty. Thank, well, I live here, and also <laughs> um, Patty's gonna do probably do all the sabbats with me. Yeah, because there are eight, and they always come. So I'll need someone to talk to. It was a real pleasure, Amy. Thank you. Really lovely to meet you. Um, it's really lovely to meet you as well. I would like to have babies <laughs> with you one day. <laughs> um, no, I think it's. I think. I think you did a great. I think that was that was a lovely story as well. Yeah. Uh, mysterious, but lovely. Mysterious. Um, lots of questions. And I look forward to subscribing to your yes, podcast. Yes, and if you do like this, if you did like this episode, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Follow me on all the socials. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you can follow Patty too if you want. It's very random. He does. His Instagram is the most random thing. Like as a person who takes. Um, Instagram very seriously. I put a lot of thought into it. I don't. His Instagram hurts me. For someone who's in on marketing, so many levels and communications. Oh, it's like yeah, feel free to follow. Yeah, if, it's, if it, you want to. it looks like the collage of a four year old. It's, <laughs> it's not. There's nothing inspired by. It. Uh, try to spread a bit of humor, a bit of happiness, a bit of joy, a bit of love. Uh, there's never anything dramatic on it. No. Except, you know, there's the odd time, um, you know, if there's something sad happens and you go, that's a bit sad. One time we had a bat in the house, but that was on my Instagram. That was, that was a Instagram. bit dramatic. That was a bit dramatic. I'm trying to catch that. Little... I'll have to repost that video because it's literally the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was half six in the morning <laughs> and I was half asleep. But anyway, yes, okay, okay, okay. Let's but do anyway, that. thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me and talking about Mabin. Thank you for having me. And, um... See you next time. See you (laughs) in the kitchen. (laughs) Thanks very much for joining us, everyone. Lots of love. Bye.